Welcome. We'll get started in a few moments, just uh, making sure that my camera is set. It's just about 3.28 and we're scheduled to start at 3.30. So I will uh, sit here and take a breath. I join you to, or I welcome you to join me in taking a deep breath before we uh, get started. I can certainly use a moment. If you're just joining us, we are waiting and allowing people to arrive and to settle before we formally begin. And I'm taking this time to calm myself. I feel my heart pounding in my chest. Over 30 years of dancing and performing and I still get nervous when it comes to being live in front of a live audience. Hmm. And it is 3.30. So again, welcome everyone. Welcome to DTH On Demand. Dance Theater of Harlem On Demand. And my name is Ramona Lisa Ortiz Smith, and I am an alumna of Dance Theater of Harlem. I am thrilled that I was invited to share something that I love, something else that I love besides dance, which is meditation. I was at DTH from 1984 to 1993, just about 10 years. And while I was with the company and the organization, I trained, I toured, I practiced, I performed, I taught. And in fact, Arthur Mitchell, the founder of the Dance Theater of Harlem, uh, you know, enabled me to live my dream. Yes. So. Another thing I'd like to say is uh, meditation has been with me for a number of years. And before I get into all of that, I want to give you all a little bit of the, you know, what my guidelines for myself are. You know, I want to let you know that this class is an open meditation class. And the purpose of the class is to Hmm, offer you a basic understanding of what meditation is and also an understanding of what mindful is, mindfulness is from my experience. And I see a lot of people joining. Hey, ooh, I feel good to see some people that I'm familiar with. Ooh, I need your love and support, you all. This is my first time on YouTube Live. <laughs> so again, I want to offer a basic understanding of meditation and mindfulness. Uh, share a little bit about my personal meditation practice and also the spiritual path that I've been on for formally for about 12 years and, you know, more than I realize definitely more than 25 years. And then I'd like to lead you through a guided meditation. And I'll talk a little bit about what that is. And also we'll have some silent meditation all within that same frame. And uh, there'll be time for questions and responses. One of my mentors, Dara Williams, mentioned this in a uh, 
session I was with in her before that we may not have the answers. Teachers or leaders, we don't always have the answers. So I will come up with a response. Yes. And after that, there will be um, time for me to perhaps offer those that are interested some, I don't know, some information or suggestions on incorporating a very simple and basic mindfulness practice in your daily life as it is. So the class is 45 minutes, um, Eastern time, 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. West Coast time, which is where I am, 3.30 to 4.15. The last 15 minutes of the class after the 45 minute session, I'll be available on YouTube Live to talk a little bit about my experience as a dancer with the Dance Theater of Harlem. I hope that's more like a conversation and, you know, um, so I see, I just want to say hi to everyone. Hello, all. Greetings. Yes. And just to let you know that um, I welcome you to chat, but as a part of the practice of meditation, I'm going to be focusing on the meditation and I invite you to, I mean, you know, while I'm doing the intro, I think it's great, send in your things, but I invite you to actually uh, save your chats and questions for the question and response section of the meditation. So you'll see me leaning over here a little bit uh, every now and then because I need to time myself because I am nervous, but I like to talk. So I'll go on and on and on and we only have 45 minutes and I definitely wanna make sure we get to the meditation part. So I'm gonna start with, um, I guess, sharing, sharing a little bit about, uh, what mindfulness is. So mindfulness, you've probably heard it, it's everywhere now, it's like another trending thing, but in fact, mindfulness and meditation have been around for thousands of years. Uh, the definition for mindfulness that I'm gonna share with you is the result of bringing one's attention to the experiences occurring in the present moment. So simply that, bringing your attention to this moment now. And for me, that sounds pretty easy, but I get lost in the past. I get bounced out into the future. <sighs> and mindfulness, when I'm mindful, when I think about it, reminds me that this moment right here and now is all that we have. Another definition for mindfulness is uh, just, you know, something simple. You know, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening right now? is to break it down like that. And meditation itself, well, if it's defined as a practice where an individual uses a technique such as mindfulness, mindfulness is a technique, or focusing the mind on a particular object. You could focus it on a thought or an activity. You can even focus it on what's happening in your body. And we do this meditation for an outcome. I Mm, I'm not going to advise. An outcome you may not expect is the way I'll frame it. But really to achieve emotional and mental stability and clarity. That's why I practice. I practice because I get so jumbled up in my head with thoughts and plans and to do's that, um, you know, I need to just sit down, quiet my mind, still my body, and actually hope that when things settle, that I have some clarity. And then I can see and focus on the thoughts that really make a difference to me. <clears throat> so there are many types of meditation and mindfulness. You may have heard of um, MBSR as a popular one, mindfulness-based stress reduction. There's also, uh, let's see, how can I forget? Insight meditation, ha, huh, that's what I practice, insight meditation. And um, and then there, there are plenty other types of meditation. And today, because my experience is mostly in insight meditation, that's what I'll be sharing with you. So inside of Vipassana meditation, Vipassana is actually a Pali word that can be translated as seeing clearly. So insight, seeing inwards, Vipassana, seeing clearly. And it's a Pali word, which is an ancient um, Indian language. So meditation and uh, 
well, get into the practice that I do soon, has been around again for thousands of years. So insight meditation, seeing clearly. <clears throat> you can focus on your body. You can focus on sounds. You can focus on so many different things. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit more. But first, I want to tell you about how I got started with meditation. How about that? It was about, mm, I don't know, it was over 25 years ago because my daughter's 25 years old right now. So it was about 25 years ago and I was still dancing with Dance Theater of Harlem in New York. And my friend, Sophia Morris, who is currently the Arts Education and Community Outreach Manager for Dance Theater of Harlem, who is actually the person that invited me to do this, she's actually a friend and dance colleague that taught me how to meditate for the first time. I didn't have any formal practice and I don't really remember what she was doing, but I was visiting her at her apartment and she said, hey, I wanna show you something. You know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit because it was 30 years ago and I definitely don't remember all of the details, but it had such a significant impact on my life that I'm still practicing today. So it's been over 25 years that I've been practicing meditation, probably more like 30. You know, so she said, hey, Ramona, let's just practice. Let me show you something. And I said, OK, what? And she said, just sit still. And, you know, I'm silly. I like to move around. Plus, I was young, still silly, not young. <laughs> um, and so she said, let's just focus on the spot. Sit here and look and just concentrate. And I sat there and I remember laughing, busting out laughing because I never sat in front of somebody before and just stared at a spot and was quiet. And she said, come on, Ramona, come on, get serious. You know, and I'm like, OK. And uh, we said she finally got me to be quiet and to concentrate. And uh, fast forward, you know, I continued that summer with that practice of meditation. Just in that moment at her house in her apartment with she sharing with me to focus on the spot and to be quiet and still changed my life. I went home, I practiced, I would meditate in the bathtub, my bedroom, sitting. At that time, I would focus with my, uh, meditate with my eyes open and I would focus on a candle or something like that. Or maybe a, a point um, on the floor or the wall. And eventually I noticed that uh, my mind began to settle, certain thoughts would come back up and I began to be able to differentiate between thoughts that really had no meaning, meaning and then thoughts that came up that had an impact even on my emotional state. And I, I was beginning, I was able to tell, you know, I wasn't at this time, I wasn't happy anymore. You know, and why wasn't I happy anymore? And it was a hard truth to face, to face. But that insight, that's the wisdom, the internal wisdom that each of us has is what has inspired me to continue to meditate to this day. So thank you, Sophia. You changed my life. Uh, so I, I eventually... Um, you know, a few years later, my older brother, John Ortiz Hudson, invited me to a retreat, a silent retreat. And, you know, at that time, I was like super busy, single mom, had been in school, working, all this stuff. And I was like, "Ooh, I just need to get off the treadmill, get out the rat race, you know. And my brother was like, um, well, you know, have you ever considered a silent retreat? And I'm like, huh, what's that? And so he introduced me to uh, Spirit Rock Meditation Center, actually, and uh, invited me to a silent meditation retreat where we actually practice insight meditation in the Buddhist tradition, the ancient lineage of the Theravada practice for like a week. And again, my life was changed. The peace that I had access to the stillness, the nature, the environment. And I learned that, yes, I was there at a meditation retreat, but that I can have that peace anywhere, anytime, no matter what's going on. It's not always easy to access, but having the tools and disciplining myself to sit again, the discipline that I got from dance theater helps me again to actually meditate and to sit still and to remind myself that, to gather my energy and to just connect with the earth and my internal self. 
So although I practice in the Theravada tradition, which is another term, a Pali term that is the basically means um, the teachings of the elders. It's it's said to be one of the oldest traditions that the Buddha Siddhartha Gautama established when Buddhism was established in India, in Southeast Asia, more than 2,600 years ago. Now, some of y'all might be getting nervous because I didn't say nothing about Buddhism on my little intro thing. Um, but however, you know, one of the benefits, I was nervous too, because I was like, oh my God, I'm in this meditation hall and there's Buddha statues and ah. And, you know, the teachers told me, and I want to share with you because this in itself was a liberating practice, that it didn't, I didn't have to embrace the Buddha. I didn't have to embrace any of that tradition at all. In fact, the Buddha was trained by other spiritual teachers who taught him meditation. And through meditation, the Buddha was sitting quiet and still. And that's when it is said that he became enlightened, an enlightened being or an awakened one. And the Buddha said that we all have that ability to become awake. Whatever your path is, it need not be Buddhist. It need not be spiritual. It need not be, <laughs> you're free to do what you want. And his whole teaching was the path to freedom and liberation. And meditation again was a tool that can help you get there. And the Dharma, which is the formal teachings of the Buddha or the canonical, canonical text of the Buddha is uh, basically, you know, instruction for specifics on training to attain your freedom through the practice of meditation and the Dharma. But again, meditation alone, without the Dharma, the Dharma simply means, it's another term, another Pali term that means the nature of phenomena, simply being with what is. Yeah. So you'll hear me use Pali terms or Sanskrit terms, Buddhist terms, but please feel free to replace those terms with whatever you're comfortable with and know that the intention of me sharing this is to just give you a, a bit of my history. I've been practicing in the Theravada tradition for 12 years. So it just comes out naturally. Um, but you, my offering to you is to invite you to sit with me, to sit in the stillness wherever you are with whatever you have and find that inner peace for yourself. In fact, for an example, um, I believe that dance was my first embodiment practice. We as dancers, especially at the Dance Theater of Harlem under Arthur Mitchell's training, we had to know exactly what our body was doing at any given moment. From our fingertip, we can't see my fingertips, from our fingertips, if we were doing a dance pose, I don't know, you know, <laughs> to our toes. We had to be focused. And in fact, I had a teacher, Meta Spagnardi, who said, find your quiet. And at the time, I didn't really know what it meant. But I knew before we started class, we had to take first position, our arms on ba, or low fifth, and make sure we had our minds together and our bodies and our thoughts and our energy so that we can begin our training. So dancing, for me, was my first embodiment practice. Let's see, um, at this time, I guess I could uh, perhaps before we go into the guided practice, are there any burning questions? I wanna make sure that I covered what I wanted to share with you. Okay, I don't think so, all right. And can someone give me a thumbs up? I've been talking a long time. Can you hear me okay? And is the volume good? Let me know. All right, maybe I'll say it. Can you hear me okay? 
How's that? Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So let me see what I want to do. I have some notes here so that I can stay on task. Um, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad that you can hear me. It's a little late for me to ask you, but at least I can ask you. All right. So then... Um, Maybe I should uh, also share with you that this tradition of meditation and the tradition of Buddhism or Buddhist practices, I like to say, because I these isms are getting to me. So the Buddhist practice is 2,600 years old or so. And it comes from Southeast Asia, India. And the tradition that I've learned it through were from uh, white men who went to India and had the privilege and opportunity to practice what is called the Dhamma and bring it back to the United States and share with people because it was such a phenomenal, it had a, such a phenomenal impact on their lives. And I am privileged to have been exposed to that, um, not just through my brother sharing that opportunity with me, but through the organizations that I've been involved with, offering me opportunities to be there. And the practice itself has been, um, you know, not always easy for people of color, people who look like me to, and people of certain economic and marginalized populations to access. And there's a lot of people that did a lot of work to diversify the teachings and the trainings in the traditional sense of, uh, the Dharma. Meditation itself, again, the secular version has become very mainstream, but I just want to acknowledge the people of color, the marginalized populations who preceded me in these teachings and um, just honor them for sharing it with me so that I can share it, who knew, via YouTube online. <laughs> Last thing I expected. So we're going to... Uh, start our meditation practice. Are you ready? Great. I'm guessing that means yes, because it's so weird. I can't see you. <laughs> you know, I'm used to being able to see my audience. And, uh, you know, even on Zoom, you can see your audience if you want to most of the time, unless you're, unless you're in conference view. So anyway, let's begin. Ah, Oh, okay. I see a question. Someone has a doubt and they say that, um, is this meditation class like yoga? I'll try to give you a response. I don't know if it's the correct answer, but this class that I'm offering today is going to be a, a guided sitting or laying down. And I'll get into the postures in a few minutes. Meditation. We will not be doing any movement. Meditation is a part of yoga, yoga and meditation go hand in hand, but I am not a yoga instructor. So this is unique as a dancer and for Dance Theater of Harlem to offer meditation class to be still, you know, is juxtaposed to the movement that you might expect from a class being offered at Dance Theater of Harlem. But again, back to my teacher, Meta Spignardi, and even, you know, Arthur Mitchell, we had to find our quiet and be poised before we started each and every performance. We had to concentrate and be focused. And so we are going to practice our stillness. And even sometimes when we were dancing on stage, for example, the main swan might be doing the pas de deux and the swans like me in the background were sitting there still and we couldn't space out. We had to be focused and ready for the next step for our next move. You know, so um, this will not be a yoga class. We will be sitting still. And I hope you um, stay with me and give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to set my timer again. And I'm going to give you instructions. And I, uh, I invite you to get comfortable. Find a comfortable position. 
The Buddha offered four poses, sitting, standing, walking, and lying down. And I believe that everything in between and every pose in between is a mindfulness pose. We won't be walking today. That takes a different set of instructions. But I'm in a chair. I don't have my dancer body anymore. I have a 54-year-old sedentary body right now. So I sit in the chair most of the time with props. Um, so find a chair. If you do have a cushion and are able to sit on the floor, it's good to raise your hips up a little bit, you know, sitting on the edge of a pillow so that you're in alignment. Uh, if you want to lay in your bed or on the floor and put pillows under your knees, I want you to be comfortable because you're going to sustain this position in a relaxed way for the next mm, 15 to 20 minutes or so. And wherever you are, As long as you can hear me, it's okay. If your light's on, you might want to dim it a little bit. In fact, maybe I'll do that as well. Make sure your feet, if you're sitting in a chair, are firmly on the floor. Your back is supported. If you're sitting on a cushion, Make sure you're upright and relaxed and having your shoulders over your hips and your neck, your head over your shoulders. And maybe start by taking a deep breath in and exhale. Yes, and sensing your body which is known in the practice that I follow as the first foundation of mindfulness. Everything you need for the Dhamma is in your body. Everything you need, the nature of phenomena is in your body, just as it is. Some meditation, just sitting, being still, and mindfulness, bringing awareness to the fact that you are sitting or lying down. We'll focus on the body, and I realize that for the, some people, the body may not be accessible. Sitting a certain way or for a long period of time may not be accessible, may not be comfortable. So please, I invite you to listen to your body and find a posture where you can be still and comfortable and take care of yourself. Meditation and mindfulness to me is also an act of caring. Audre Lorde says, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. And today, as we begin to find ease in our body amongst and amidst COVID-19, the Black Lives Matter movement, political upheaval, and so many other things that we deal with as human beings, I offer you this practice as a way to care radically for yourself. If you're comfortable, close your eyes gently. If you're not comfortable with your eyes closed, I invite you to just lower your gaze and find something to focus on softly. That's how I started with Sophia, focusing on a spot. I will eventually close my eyes. And if you're peeking around, <laughs> you might see me with my eyes open so that I can track the time. So in this moment, feel your body. Sit and know you're sitting. Lie down and know you're lying down. Stand and know you're standing. For the first or the next five minutes or so, I will be talking. And then at the end, there will be three bells to let you know that the practice of meditation is over. You may have five to 10 minutes of silence at the end.
So let's do a body scan. Starting by feeling your feet. If you're sitting on a chair or standing. If you're on the cushion, feeling your backside connected to the earth. Knowing that the earth can hold everything. All of who you are, all that's in your heart, all that's on your mind. Feel the support of the earth and let go with another deep breath. So if you've chosen to have a low gaze and keep your eyes open, your focus point is your spot, whatever you select it. If you've closed your eyes, I invite you to focus on the breath. If the breath is not accessible to you, you can use sound or bodily sensations in the same way. I invite you to pick one and stay with it as best you can, gently for the duration of this practice. Find your rhythm, your breath, the normal nature of your breath. Bringing mindfulness to the breath. Perhaps you notice the rise and fall of the belly. The rise and fall of the chest. For some people, mindfulness of the breath happens right under the nostrils at the top lip. Some feel it, coolness, warmth. Knowing that you're breathing, recognizing that your body is being breathed. Recognizing the source of life, our breath. If your mind wanders, guess what? That's what the mind does. As soon as you notice, that you've wandered off to thinking, hmm, when am I gonna eat? Ooh, did I pay that bill? Ooh, why did I come to this YouTube live? Whatever it is, as soon as you notice you're thinking, it's a moment of mindfulness. And I invite you to come back and focus on your breath. If you're focusing on sounds, go back to listening. A lot of us are home with COVID-19. Perhaps you live in the city in cars, sirens, opening to whatever it is in life without resisting can offer you a moment of peace because that is what is. That is the truth of what is happening.
If you've lost your gaze, refocus that. Gently coming back to the breath if you're using the breath. I'm going to continue to guide you with the breath. And if you're focusing on the spot or a sound, when I say breath, you apply that to your focal point, your object of meditation. If you've noticed sensations in the body, maybe tingling your feet, maybe getting numb if your legs are crossed, arms feeling stiff, heat arising, realizing muscle stiffness, I invite you to take a breath and as you exhale, can you release and breathe into that area? Notice. Are you suffering or not suffering? And where is your choice of freedom? Feel free to mindfully adjust your posture as necessary with mindfulness. This practice perhaps will show up in life. You're suffering from something else. And you realize, huh? I'm suffering. Can I make a mindful adjustment to my life? Can I respond with mindfulness instead of reacting? In a breath, any time in life, as long as we are living, is available to us to pause.
If your mind has wandered, come back gently. Reinvite yourself to begin again. A fresh start, following the breath. Refocusing. Our breath is heavy on my heart right now. Wasn't sure if I was going to mention it, but silence is complacency. George Floyd and so many others could not breathe. The breath is precious. Get to know it. It brings us peace. It is our life force. It sustains us. It nourishes us. It calms us. It keeps us alive. And it's always with us until it's not. I'm going to share a quote before we come to a close of the meditation. Ajahn Chah, the great Thai meditation master, taught, do everything with a mind that lets go. Don't accept praise or gain or anything else. If you let go a little, you will have a little peace. If you let go a lot, you will have a lot of peace. If you let go completely, you will have complete peace. In a moment, you'll hear the bell ring three times. I invite you to really listen to it as the sound invites you to come back from wherever you were on this journey. My practice is to bow and to say, Namaste. I bow to the divine nature in all of you, in all of nature, including the divine nature within my own being. And I thank you for the opportunity to share this practice of meditation with you. And I hope that it brings you some benefit to your life as it has for me. 
we have a few moments for questions. I'm uh, going to try to catch as many as I can on the live chat. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd like to know, you know, how that was, but whatever your questions are, and I'll see if I can respond. And I want to leave a little time at the end to support those that are interested in um, incorporating the practice into your daily life, just as it is right now. Nothing formal. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Yes, I see dance is a combination of stillness and movement. Absolutely. Are there any questions? Um, how was that for you? Anyone want to share? I see. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Mm, people feel better. I feel so much better. Thank you. Just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you are welcome. Mm. Do I suggest any readings? Wow. Um, you know, I covered up my books. <laughs> uh, there are plenty of readings. Um, mm. Wow. Maybe I could offer a, a reading list to post on um, the website, but, you know, start with something simple. I'm trying to see if I have one here that I'm looking at, but um, there's something called mindfulness for beginners, you know, and, uh, but yes, I, maybe I can share a book list. I didn't think about that. Um, and how long have I practiced? So I've been meditating for over 25 years. I want to say maybe now 30, because my daughter's 25 and I was definitely meditating before she arrived. And I've been practicing uh, silent meditation, the Vipassana meditation, and going on retreats for the past 12 years. Um, it's raining, which made the meditation. Oh, yes, the sound of rain can be beautiful. I love meditating in the rain. Yes. And you can put your questions in the chat if you guys know how to do that. Um, ah, somebody enjoyed me minting Meta Spagnardi. Spagnardi. <laughs> Yes, yes. She said, find your quiet. Um, oh, a little bit about my history with DTH. Well, if you'd like to stay on from, uh, oh, it's 4.15. I can certainly talk about my history with DTH. And before I get into that, thank you all really for joining me. This was my first YouTube live session. Um, I want to make sure that if you you know, I said I would talk about suggestions for incorporating meditation into your life. You know, you need to do anything big and formal. Anytime, anywhere. You could be on the bus, the subway, and people aren't going that out now. But at home, with all that's going on, it, you know, like when I close down my computer today after this class, I'm just going to sit here and go, <sighs> and feel the quiet. When I turn the TV off at night after watching the news, taking a few deep breaths, Sitting outside in the morning, I, I have that option at this time in my life to have coffee meditation. You know, even just pausing, um, just stopping. Sometimes I'm walking back and forth in the house, and get lost, don't know what I'm doing next. <laughs> I go mindfulness and I stand and I take a breath and I feel my feet in the ground. So, you, you know, and start small, start with, you know, you know, I'm going, you know, meditate for two minutes while I'm laying in the bed before I get up in the morning or two minutes before I go to bed at night. You know, just want you to know that you, this body is always with you until it's not, like I said, and our breath is with us until it's not. And right here, we all have it here, that peace, closing your eyes if it's comfortable, knowing your eyes are closed, sitting, knowing you're sitting, standing, you're knowing you're standing, walking, knowing you're walking, Lying down, knowing you're lying down, and every transitional movement in between is practice, and every little bit adds up. And believe me, it goes away as fast as it, you know, as fast as your mind wanders. <laughs> um, and yes, this was recorded, and it should be available another time. So, um, yeah, does anyone want to give me a prompt about my history with Dance Theater of Harlem? I uh, didn't talk about the fact that I, you know, I grew up in California. I'm back in California. I currently live uh, what is what is known as the coastal Miwok land, now known as, uh, um, you know, Northern California. Um, well, the area that I'm in. And I went to Dance Theater Harlem when I was 18 years old. Yeah. You know, graduated from Berkeley High School. I'm an original Berkeleyite, original East, I mean, oops, West Coast <laughs> girl, woman. Um, and I was 18 years old and, you know, 
I have been dancing from the time I was about nine. So I got a late start in my dance career for normal, the regular uh, people. In fact, I remember when I was 13, I was in class in Berkeley with six or seven years old. But by the time I was 18, um, Dance Theater of Harlem had come to the Paramount Theater in Oakland. And um, there was a master class and I went to take it with um, the late Lowell Smith. And he invited me to take company class. And long story short, I was invited to the summer session and moved to New York when I was 18 years old, came home, said, you know what, going back. And I spent the next almost 10 years training and dancing, touring with the company internationally and nationally. Uh, what, what, what do you wanna know? <laughs> what can I say? I'm happy to be able to give back to a, a organization you know, that I spent my youth in, my 20s. I spent my 20s, my late teens and late and through my 20s dancing and learning. And the discipline I learned as a dancer, you know, uh, carries me through now. You know, I, I'm a, I started, once I left dance, I started living in my head. And so that's another way that meditation and coming back into the body uh, helped me to reground and reintegrate the rest of my body into my life, you know. Um, let's see, some of my you know, I, I had a very challenging time. Ballet itself didn't come easy for me. And so I had to work really hard and I had lots of energy at that time. And, you know, I loved it. I loved the fact that I was able to dance with a company who, who looked like me, with people who looked like me. That was fascinating to me. You know, brown girls in ballet have been around since 19, what was it, 69 when, uh, and before, but became really, you know, Arthur Mitchell decided to do a, have, make a movement by establishing Dance Theater of Harlem for people of color, you know, to break through barriers. And uh, so I'm happy to come back 20 something years later, 30 years later, and to be able to offer something back to the uh, DTH community. Uh, oh, someone said, oh, Rachel, someone's saying, sorry, I'm calling out names. I don't know the YouTube protocol, but mm, I really enjoyed dancing. I had a lot of fun. Will there be another one next week? Not that I know of. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so I would be happy to, you know, if somebody wants to give me a prompt for my dance career at the Dance State of Harlem, I'd love it because there's so much to talk about. Oh, my love for dance. Yeah, I absolutely love dance, you know. And um, actually, I was doing a training recently in, in this tradition, and it was, yeah, I'd taken a vow about not dancing. And it was really, I struggled, I struggled because I love to dance. I don't do ballet anymore, but I still like to move. But what I realized in that practice, it was about, again, being mindful, you know? And then again, because people of, well, people of color founded the tradition that I practice now or, um, but well, dance is a part of me. Let me just put it like that. I am still a dancer, uh, not professional, but I still like to move and so, you know, again, dancing was my first embodiment practice, my first meditative practice, my first concentration practice. Oh, what performances were was I in? Okay, well, maybe you mean um, I. Oh, what did I? What do I remember about Arthur Mitchell's guidance? Okay, those two. So, um, performances I was in. Let's see, I danced at the the New York season um, at. What was it called? I danced at Brooklyn Academy of Music, City Center for the, you know, um, the Metropolitan Opera House, New York State Theater, in terms of here in the United States, and toured to Russia, Germany, France, Italy, one of my favorites, Egypt, you know, we went to Africa, so we went to Egypt and South Africa. Um, my favorite dances were, I loved Dougla, and I think there's going to be a special on Dougla on YouTube Live soon. It's one of my favorite, choreographed by Jeffrey Holder. I loved Serenade, was one of my favorites to dance. It's a long ballet to look at, I say, but I love, love Serenade. Um, Four Temperaments, 
um, Swan Lake. By the time I got to be a be a swan in the core of Swan Lake, I felt like I've made it. I can wear tutu with point shoes on. Yes, you know. Um, in terms of you know Mr. Mitchell's guidance, yeah, one thing he always used to say was, "We're part of something larger than ourselves." And that's still true. We all are a part of something larger than ourselves. This universe, the universes, it's much larger than ourselves, much larger than even these horrible issues we're dealing with now, COVID-19, you know, again, the Black Lives Matter movement, political upheaval, illness. The universe is bigger than ourselves. And we can find peace in the vastness of that knowledge and to know that we are more than this relative world. And that's powerful. And to me, that's where the expansiveness is. That's where the freedom lies. And yes, I still have to navigate this relative world. But meditation and my other practices um, Support me in doing that. Huh. Ooh, what was it like to be 18 in New York City in 1984? Mm. Can't tell it all on YouTube. <laughs> it was exciting. You know, I loved California. I went into, it was a culture shock having grown up in California and moving to New York. And, ooh, people used to warn me. They'd be like, ooh, you're going to New York? Stay out of Harlem. And I'm like, that's exactly where I'm going. Um, but it was the place to be if you were an artist you know, a dancer, a singer, a painter, a poet. And um, yeah, it was exciting. It was scary. I had no idea what I had gotten into, but once I got used to it and the people at DTH became my second family, you know? And so I had all the love and support of the company members, school, school, the students, you know, have some lifelong friends through that experience at the Dance State of Harlem. And I learned, you know, discipline that I can apply to my jobs. That's something else Mr. Mitchell used to say, you know, whether you wanna be a dancer or not, you're gonna have the discipline to succeed in life. And it's true, it really is true. I think back to my dance background, even for this, I was like, okay, I've got to prepare, I've got to rehearse, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And it's because of my training at Dance Theater, we had to be ready and professional at all times. Mr. Mitchell used to say, you don't know who I'm gonna bring up into the studio. So have it together. <laughs> and I let loose sometimes, you know, cause I was so disciplined as a dancer that I have let loose and still am disciplined within my ability to grow authentically into myself. Um, de dum de dum. Let's see. Oh, what ballets did I feel the most spiritual in when dancing? Wow, so forces of rhythm. I remember one time actually having a spiritual feeling when I was, or spiritual experience when I was a skirt girl in Forces of Rhythm, another Lewis Johnson ballet. Also, Banda, you know, Banda was a, uh, a ballet about a Buddhist priest, and we weren't allowed to, I mean, not, a, not did I say Buddhist? voodoo priest, <laughs> excuse me. And we weren't allowed to do that in some places because it was such a powerful, um, I guess, expression of voodoo is voodoo and dance. But I felt very spiritual in that. Um, as well as dukla, you know, ceremonial, spiritual. Uh, wow, yeah. Okay, well, we're almost out of time. Yeah, it is, we have about, we have a few more moments, maybe three or so according to the clock. And I guess I wanna say, um, again, I just hope this was beneficial to you. I feel joy in my heart. My heart was pounding, it's no longer pounding. I feel really excited to share the Dharma, to share meditation with you, to share my experience and to be reconnected with uh, the legacy of the Dance Theater of Harlem. Thank you for the invitation. And just remember, you know, that you can stop, 
quiet the mind, still the body, recharge, digest, release, rest, process, and heal just by being still and turning inward just for a moment. It's always available to you. Thank you for your practice and for listening. May you be well, safe, and at ease. <laughs>